The way you look, your hair color and height, is often considered to be a result of your genetics. However, there's an additional level of control on top of your genetic code known as epigenetics, epi meaning on top of. Consider that all the cells in your body contain exactly the same DNA, yet are very different from each other. A liver cell is very different from a skin cell or a brain cell. It is the epigenetic modifications, the tiny on and off switches applied to your DNA that determine which genes will be activated and which will be turned off. This is the essence of epigenetics. Hi, I'm Dr. Marie Conley. Today we're going to talk about epigenetics as an additional layer of gene control and how it can change in response to certain lifestyle factors such as exercise. You are not just a result of your genetic code. How you live your life and the choices that you make over several decades trigger epigenetic changes in your DNA that affect the way you look and feel. Shrinking our perspective from the whole organism to the nucleus of an individual cell, we find a tangled mess of DNA packaged in a specific way to maximize efficiency. The DNA is like thread that is wound around spools or groups of proteins called histones. There's, there are eight histone proteins stuck together and this is the spool that DNA is wound around. The DNA histone complex is called a nucleosome. If DNA is wound loosely around the histone spool, its genes are accessible and can be transcribed into messenger RNA or mRNA. Alternatively, if DNA is wrapped tightly around the histone complex, the genes are hidden and cannot be transcribed into mRNA and thus cannot be translated into protein. This is one layer of epigenetic control. How tightly DNA is packaged determines if its genes are active or not. Each nucleosome has eight tails, one emerging from each of the eight histone proteins. Each tail is composed of a string of 15 to 40 amino acids. Various chemical tags, such as methyl groups and acetyl groups, can be added to these tails. These additions, called histone modifications, determine how tightly the DNA is wound around histone proteins which in turn affects which genes can be accessed and read by enzymes. Now, if we shrink our perspective a little more to look at individual DNA strands, we can appreciate that methyl groups are also added to cytosine bases, but only to those that are followed by guanine. These are called CPG islands. Cytosine and guanine are two of the four nucleotide bases that form the ladder of DNA. This common epigenetic modification, known as DNA methylation, tends to turn off or inactivate a gene. For example, if the promoter region of the BRCA1 gene is methylated, this tumor suppressor gene would be turned off and your risk of developing cancer would probably increase. With aging, the amount of DNA methylation gradually decreases. At the same time, Increased methylation of certain tumor suppressor genes becomes more common, increasing your risk of cancer as you age. A real-world application is an epigenetic clock which examines DNA methylation patterns of a person's genome to estimate their true biologic age as opposed to their chronologic age. Non-coding RNA, particularly microRNA, are responsible for a third type of epigenetic modification. These are tiny RNA snippets that are transcribed from the DNA in the nucleus of a cell. After modification, they are exported to the cytoplasm of the cell where they can prevent specific mRNA from being translated into protein. They act like tiny molecular managers exerting control at a later stage in the process from DNA to RNA to protein. Unlike your genetic code, Epigenetic modifications are not permanent and can change depending on certain lifestyle factors. For example, lifelong physical activity is associated with specific DNA methylation patterns in skeletal muscle 
that allow for greater insulin sensitivity, muscle growth, and more efficient fat burning. So to recap, we first looked at a person's appearance, which is the result of selective gene expression. We then zoomed in to look at all the individual cells in the body, each one with the exact same DNA, but with different on-off switches affecting which specific genes are expressed in different cell types. We then looked inside a cell's nucleus to find a tangled mess of DNA threads wound around histone spools. The DNA that is more loosely wrapped is more open, allowing its genes to be read. We then looked at individual nucleotide bases in a DNA strand and saw that special chemical tags such as methyl groups could be added directly to cytosine bases, typically to inactivate or turn off these genes. Thank you for listening.